This 18-year-old game is considered an FPS masterpiece. When Fear launched in 2005, it was praised for its next-level bullet-time gunfights and its highly intelligent AI. Yet despite two sequels and many copycats over the years, it seems like no one's been able to truly recapture Fear's original magic. But what is it about this seemingly rudimentary corridor shooter that sets it so high above other games? Well, you kind of have to go back in time a bit to understand. 2005 may have been a long time ago, but there were some incredibly impressive, industry-defining games released that year. Resident Evil 4, God of War, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, and Battlefield 2 all launched back in 2005. And just a year prior, Rockstar and Valve dropped some of their greatest and most influential games ever with Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and Half-Life 2. And while many other games of that time could have easily been overshadowed by the stiff competition, Fear still ranks high among those games as an incredibly influential FPS. Now, I got inspired to go back and play this game again as a recent indie game, Trepang 2 or Trepang Squared, reminded me just how much I enjoyed Fear. However, and I'll be honest, I was fully expecting an 18-year-old game to perhaps not live up to my fond memories of just how great it was. But to my surprise, the game actually holds up incredibly well. The lack of sprint or proper aiming down sight mechanics did take a little while to get reacquainted with, but the second that you hit that bullet time button and watch the levels explode with debris and body parts, it put me back in that same wow factor feeling that I had in 2005. The combat just clicks, and it's an absolute blast to get back into it. However, one of the most impactful aspects of this game for its time is honestly pretty easy to miss if you're looking back all these years later. That is, the AI. Fear debuted at a touchstone moment for AI design in video games. Halo Combat Evolved had pushed a system called Behavior Trees into mainstream game development. It's a system that basically gives NPCs rules and behaviors to follow instead of just explicit actions that they had to perform at all times. And at the time, most AI in games were limited to simplistic rule systems, scripted behaviors, and just basic pathfinding. They could walk around levels, play animations, and harass the player, but they could really emulate human behavior dynamically or on their own. Fear's AI lead, Jeff Orkin, together with the other developers at Monolith, implemented a goal-oriented action plan system, the first of its kind. In very simple terms, every NPC in Fear is given a goal to achieve. For hostile soldiers, this is typical stuff related to killing the player, like shoot, retreat, flank, take cover, etc. And to achieve these goals, the developers wrote dozens and dozens of actions the NPCs can execute. The actions include things like drawing a weapon, opening a door, going on a patrol, or throwing a grenade. And every NPC in the game is controlled by a series of goals and actions, including even the rats. And obviously, not every NPC can execute every goal or action that's built into the system. Like, rats don't have guns, so they can't execute any actions or goals related to shooting. But if they did have guns... And because the AI have this complex goal-oriented system and a way of executing their goal, same as you, the player, they feel far more realistic and human-like in firefights. The enemies are actually just as fast and capable as you in combat, which means that the level design plays a huge role in making sure that the combat is both fair and also not too frustrating for you as the player. It can feel like you're playing against human players at times, which again for 2005 was a huge deal. Now of course you have the key advantage which allows you to chew through hordes of enemy AI and that is bullet time. Now I do remember when the marketing for Fear first kicked off ahead of its launch, it kind of looked like another Matrix clone cash grab style game. There were so many games coming out in the early 2000s that copied Max Payne in the Matrix and most of them were kind of terrible. Bullet time, aggressive color grade loud music, it was all the rage, and I think a lot of people were glad when that phase ended. And Fear's trailer basically made it look like it was copying all of that gimmicky gameplay and also copying the rings plot of a creepy girl walking slowly towards you. Basically, the game looked painfully unoriginal. 
but once I got hands on the game, my impressions changed completely. The bullet time mechanics in the game are so well designed and integrated to the entire gameplay loop that it doesn't feel like a gimmick anymore, but really the central way of enjoying the game. It gives you time to think, gauge what enemies are doing, plan your next move. It's kind of like a tactical pause in the game, but it doesn't really actually pause the game. It slows everything down, which is actually a little different to how bullet time works in a lot of other games. So while you can move a lot faster than NPCs in bullet time, your bullets themselves don't actually move faster, and your reload and weapon swap animations also play dramatically slower. So it doesn't just let you instantly do everything faster while everything else has to move slower. So if you get caught switching weapons while you're in slow mo, well, you sometimes just watch yourself die slowly just as you would have normally. And while you can unload all your bullets at an NPC in slow mo, it'll still take time for your shots to actually connect, which means that you're gonna miss a lot more often than you think. The bullet time in fear is a well-tuned balancing act of giving the player breathing room and a tactical advantage without letting you just bypass the actual challenge of combat. Plus, it's a finite resource. You can't stay in bullet time forever and it takes a few seconds to fully recharge. Relying on it to get you out of every sticky situation just simply isn't possible. Now, in my opinion, the weakest aspect of fear is its story. It's certainly the part of the game that I remember the least. Tonally, the game is set up very well. With the creepy research facilities and high-tech soldiers, it's a great sandbox to have a gunfight in. But narratively, the evil, telepathic bad guy stuff just seems like it's there to facilitate cheesy jump scares. Then again, I'm pretty critical over narrative elements, so very few games actually get a pass from me, and at least the story doesn't get in the way of the actual actual solid gameplay. Now surprisingly, Fear's multiplayer was actually really fun as well. With it being a less marketed and seemingly tacked on experience, the gunplay and combat mechanics were a nice hybrid of tactical gameplay and gunfu mechanics that was rare to see in the FPS scene, or at least rare to see it done well. I remember it being one of the favorite games to play back at lunch LAN events when I was a QA tester at EA. Grenade shockwaves, jump kicks, nailing your enemies to the wall with a nail gun, what's not to like? It's the perfect trash talking game as well. Looking back at it all, Fear really had the makings of a gimmicky cash grab style game, but to most gamers surprise it turned out to be an incredibly innovative single player experience, pushing what could have been boring sequences of predictable AI combat into heart pounding over the top action sequences that challenged even the most seasoned of gamers. It sold over 3 million units worldwide and holds a special place in the hearts of those who play it. When going back to play it, I actually asked you guys if there were any mods for the games that you thought were essential and might improve it, but the general response was that you can't improve perfection. Did you guys play Fear back in the day? If so, let me know in the comments and what did you think about it? Next up, check out this video of a recent game that recreates many of the notable action elements from Fear. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.